Hey, what's up? This is Casey with another episode of the Shogun have a name for. Today's shirt of the day is Live Long and Prosper. I hope you live long and prosper, just like Spock from Star Trek. So, um, I got some things going on with Afghanistan, so I just wanted to talk about some of my war stories. I was never actually in the military or anything, but I have some interesting war stories. So, in about October 2001, or whenever it was that the United States was going to war with Afghanistan, I was 21 years old. I lived in New York City. I lived through September 11th. It was horrific in every which way possible, and more, which most people don't even know. Um, so, a friend and I were getting on a bus, and we were going from here to here whatever bus doesn't matter but we were like yeah we're gonna go to afghanistan we're gonna kick the shit out of the people who did this stuff and the bus driver just said look you two college idiots shut up you have no idea what war does to a country to its people to the soldiers on both sides to the economies and all of this stuff and we're like what do you know we're gonna we're gonna get our revenge or whatever it was and he was like god you guys are just too stupid to understand i wrote that that conversation off for years and years and years and years and then all of a sudden one day it popped up into my head okay let's fast forward to 2012 or so so i'm 32 i am uh having a coffee and reading a kindle in uh, Vietnam. I'm in Vietnam for vacation. <laughs> so I'm having a drinking coffee out just in a cafe. And uh, I see a man walking towards me, a Vietnamese dude, and he's got a stack of books. And it's not very uncommon for somebody to be selling little trinkets or books or just asking for money. You know, it's, but I just kind of was just going to phase him out and not listen. So he said, oh, hi, I have some books to sell. Would you like any books? And I said, I don't know, you know, I got my Kindle. I'm not, I'm okay with books. He's like, oh, are you sure you're in, you're in Vietnam? Maybe you would like a, a Lonely Planet or something. I'm like, oh, no, I'm fine. Really, thank you so much. He's like, oh, I, I hear from your accent. You must be from the United States. And I'm always really impressed when somebody could pick up on my accent. So I was like, yeah, I'm from the United States. And he was like, let me tell you about the United States. And uh, he puts his books down. And he's like, why don't you look at my arms for a second? And I looked where his arms should be. And I didn't see them. All I saw were kind of little nubs. This guy was younger than me. This guy was probably, let's just say, 20. That was impossible to age this guy. We had just kind of nubs. We didn't have her arms. He said, you know, during when America invaded Vietnam, you brought, oh, I'm, I, I wasn't even an inkling of, <laughs> That was 10 years or so before I was even born. But, you know, America brought landmines, and they hid them, and they trapped them. And they even did something where they put toys on top of these landmines. And then they left. Um, I, when I was a boy... I saw a toy on top of a landmine. I went to grab that toy. The next thing I remember, I woke up with no arms. Um, so, why don't you, next time you see your President Obama, or whoever, yeah, that would have been Obama, so why don't you, next time you see your President Obama, or whichever president you see, 
why don't you tell him to come to the United or come to Vietnam and clean all of the landmines that you left 50 years ago out of Vietnam? I didn't fight the United States. My mom and dad didn't fight the United States. Maybe my grandma and grandfather fought the United States. That doesn't mean I sh don't deserve to have arms or little boys and little girls still don't deserve or little boys and little girls in Vietnam still should get their arms and legs blown off because the U.S. military is too lazy to even or, you know, too busy with other crap. I, <laughs> and I tried to pull out my wallet to give him some sympathy money and I said, I don't want your charity money. You know, just think about that for a minute while you're on your how can I not think about that? And he just picked up his books and kind of walked away. Uh, I basically ran up to my hostel and I cried drew up. That was pretty revolting. It wasn't revolting that you know you didn't have arms. It was revolting that something so horrible happened. And we still pretend like it doesn't. What's going to happen in Afghanistan with a bajillion dollars worth of bombs and grenades and landmines and everything? And everybody just, oh, we left. <laughs> now there's generation upon a generation of people that just don't like us. Finally, I went to Japan and I went to Hiroshima. And I just thought it was would be an interesting trip, and it was a fabulous trip. Um, they have museums, and you see something in a textbook, and this whole place is destroyed. You see it in real life, and it looks like a beautiful city. The museums are beautiful, and it says they point the finger right at them, not at America. They point right at the say. Japan started all these wars. Japan started all Japan started part of World War II. Japan attacked the United States for um, Pearl Harbor. Only one line says, "On this day, Hiroshima had a bomb dropped on it. On this day, Nagasaki had a bomb dropped on it." Then. They dedicate this huge part saying, these horrible things happened. Let's try to make sure this never happens again. I thought that was fabulous. Horrible that this horrible thing happened. Fabulous that they look at it, okay, this bad thing happened. What can we do to make it better? Um, I quit my job and moved back to the United States in 2016. I went to visit, visit some people, and they were watching Bill O'Reilly on Fox News, and the topic of the day was Hiroshima, and I was like, oh, I was just in Hiroshima. I wonder what Bill O'Reilly has to say. I didn't really know who Bill O'Reilly was. And he said, well, you know, they still throw rocks at Americans in Hiroshima. I said, that's not true. You know, the only thing, only problem I had in Hiroshima was um, the workers at Starbucks couldn't really speak English, so they couldn't get free Wi-Fi. So nobody cared that I was from America. You know, they just let me go around and do my thing. They didn't. That was not a problem at all. And this person was like, "Bill O'Reilly saying it. It's true." Right? This. It's not true. <laughs> so, all these war things, I'm sure there, you could talk to 20 people and get a thousand different answers. These are some of my experiences with wars in the beginning and wars straight after. Wars, messages getting misconstrued. Um, obviously.
obviously I was never a soldier or anything, but um, I think we are sometimes conditioned to think this is the only path to take, or there are no repercussions. All you got to do is just kill enough dudes and it's over. So. Yeah, I did some thinking on that. I hope that was somewhat entertaining. Thanks a lot for listening and watching. Bye. You're the best. Bye.